I see you. Hey, aren't you? You know me? Yeah, you're Yazora, right? How do you know that? Who are you? I'm Sora. And actually, there's something I have to ask you. Sora? Uh, You're Sora? Huh? You know who I am? Sure. I've heard of you. If you're here, then this can't be the real world, can it? But wait, that girl, she told me about you. Maybe you are real after all. Are you done? No, this isn't the real world, and I am here. But this isn't what I really look like. How would you recognize me as Yazora? Yazora is not this, but I think you and a lot of other fans missed the point of everything we've talked about and discovered revolving around his identity. So before we can talk about the proverbial false's fate, we need to break this all the way down so everyone can be on the same page. In 2019, Tetsuya Nomura said specifically, Verum Rex is not Versus 13, that only he knows why these elements have been reintroduced in a new form for the next saga of Kingdom Hearts. But this verification can even then be intrinsically verified by the observable content we have thus far. So let's break this down. As our only example of unreality, Verum Rex is a video game featuring our last adversary in Kingdom Hearts 3, Yazora proper, as its main character. As a realm, it exists on the other side of Sora's reality, so one would assume it to be a parallel, right? But that would be wrong, as Verum Rex is just a video game on our side of reality. Thus, if Yazora's world was truly a parallel, then we should rightfully assume Sora would have been a work of fiction in Yazora's world as well. But he didn't even know of Sora or what he even looked like. I mean, sure he knew his name, but not what he looked like or any description of him. The takeaway on this point is unreality is not a parallel reality. Yazora is not actually a different dimension version of Sora, however by the end of this video we will discuss another likely similar possibility. In the secret episode, Yazora himself confirmed his world is not real, but he himself is real. At least, that's the only logical interp interpretation I get from what he says here. Like how can he even acknowledge that he's not in the real world? And you may go, Mozzie, didn't we talk about this already? Yeah, but how he has this level of awareness is important, because what I didn't know back then versus now is making this even more of an issue to press on is in memory of melody's fairy godmother kairi and riku visits the nameless star but what's important is that the nameless star is said by fairy godmother to have for some reason beyond her comprehension escaped from unreality into the final world of reality she then says that she has no recollection or recollection of her world outside of knowing that it exists due to her wishes and dreams to return to her home. In other words, much like the simple human Ansem the Wise, Fairy Godmother also doesn't have awareness of unreality. So a human and one of the mythical entities within the series both have displayed a degree of uncertainty surrounding Yuzora's world. A world of unreality however this is where we truly begin fairy godmother said that the nameless star somehow got to their reality if we work on the logical assumption that this star bare minimum actually belongs to our side of reality we can finally close this case as memory of melody may have given us a clear and concise answer to the falsest rex see in memory of melody this closing plot thread ties into the xehanort one that establishes that the arcs can send people to a realm outside their own a realm revealed right after to be 
unreality. Then right after that, it's confirmed Quadratum is a world of unreality. Thus clearly, this world is not real, and Yazora as the main character of the game isn't real. With the implications that the star may be from our reality and actuality, thus she appears in the final world on our side of reality, we can say she is more than likely Strelitzia, and thus appeared in the final world due to the state she was in before being sent to unreality by Lushu. She has returned to the world in a state much like the one she was in before escaping her imminent doom with the assistance of Lushu. Notice how Riku used her dreams to get to Quadratum and Strelitzia appeared to Lorium in his dreams. So why wouldn't <clears throat> whoever is controlling Yazora as the star say be as the star says be doing the same? He is. Yazora is a character in reality traveling to unreality. The games have given us all these clues. Any evidence only points to this possibility. What's happening isn't a heart switch or body switch. Sora says, but wait, that girl, she told me about you. Maybe you are real after all. Yazora follows this with, specifically, are you done? He does not care about the girl. If he was a body switch, heart switch, body double, the guy on the box art would still care about someone that y Sora is referencing to that's a girl, as the star says herself. Unless he too is someone that fits the mold of the established surrounding mystery of the star herself. A false Yazora. A false Yazora. Which was mentioned explicitly by the star and by the name of the cutscene where Sora meets him. This person is using Yazora's body and the how was already given to us. The arcs can send someone to a realm outside of their own, unreality. Because we have never witnessed this take place, I surmise that the person sent to this realm enters a host. So once the arcs send you to unreality, you enter a host from that point. Have you ever heard of a cartoon called Kolioko? In that cartoon, the characters inhabit these vessels in a digital world by using a scanner as a portal, transferring the consciousness and form into the world of Lyoko. And I surmise once again that this is what we're looking at. When we see Yazora's visage being used and puppeted around in the secret episode, what's cool though is that if Yazora should be brain, brain said to Lorium he would help him find his sister. Wouldn't it only make sense for these two to have been this close and yet this far at the same time? This seems like the most Nomura slash Kingdom Hearts way this plotline would play out. It's like Kyrie being within Sora during the events of Kingdom Hearts 1, or Terra Xehanort confusing Mickey for over a decade. Even Sora bringing her up to Yuzora brain is a very much similar scenario to ones we've seen before. Or even the lingering Will and the Guardian. A lot of my contemporaries have done excellent jobs of breaking down the dualities of Noctis and Yazora. But with Nomura himself saying that this is not Versus 13 being redone into Kingdom Hearts itself, as in the story of Versus 13 coming up to life within Kingdom Hearts, I've always surmised that the possibility that Verum Rex becoming its own game would be possible in the future, but that's not what's happening here according to Tetsuya Nomura. I think it's clear that this truly is just the elements of that story coming into play here. But where and how they aren't the same is their implementations. This where the import this is where the importance of unreality being fiction within Kingdom within the Kingdom Hearts series comes into play. Yazora is not a literal stand-in for Sora nor his opposite universe persona. This is not actually the dark side of reality, a proverbial bizarro world, nor an alternate timeline or universe. It's just a video game. The ball Nomura has thrown us these past two years is one of discovering Yazora's identity for ourselves, revealing details and threads with simple progression, such as Kairi could have been sent to unreality. Does this mean Strelitzia and others may also be in unreality? 
Fairy Godmother brings up that the nameless star shouldn't be in their final world, as not even she is capable of this kind of travel. The close ties of Riku and her dreams is how we've reached the point of Riku traveling to Quadratum, the world of tall buildings. Then Sora is told she's waiting on Yazora and mentions this to the falsest Yazora, the fake Yazora. But this man before him does not care about the girl that told Sora about him. Then he proclaims that the world they're in is not real, but he is there. He is real. The novelization of Kingdom Hearts 3, whether you accept it as canon or not, it doesn't really matter, does a unique telling of the events of the ending of the secret episode and personally, I kinda do accept it as canon until we get everything proven further on down the line. Because for the first time ever, Kingdom Hearts has a good and bad ending, despite the fact that Sora has went up against enemies before that there's no possible way he could have defeated he could have defeated. So to bring one in now is kinda weird. I mean we literally saw Sora almost die against Master Xehanort right before Remind was released in the original story. But here's the big but. <laughs> but here's the big but if you lose and accept defeat you receive the message reconnect kingdom hearts and if you win you get an oath to return so the good ending reveals more revelations it seems as one would expect but maybe the good ending is actually in tandem with the bad one Sora is indeed crystallized and Yazora does wake up to Luxor. The only issue with this line of thought is Nomura said the opening monologue takes place at the end of the game and we see Sora in a daytime version of the final world at the end of the good ending. But if he has <clears throat> but if he was telling this monologue to himself in regards to Yazora, then the context may be for him and the star or Strelitzia and Brain. And let me break this down for you. They can take your world, the one world that Strelitzia and Brain came from, how Brain appears in Scala Echylum in the secret episode. They can take your heart, Strelitzia's death and Brain being displaced by Lushu, whatever happened to him that he appears in Scala Echylum, and so much time has gone on that his best friend, Ephemera has grown to old age and already passed away. Cut you loose from all you know. All the Chi characters have been forgotten and they've forgotten their homes, family, friends, and origin as far as all of the characters that we know about that exist today besides Master Xehanort. But if it's your fate, then every step forward will always be a step closer to home. Brain vowed in the finale to keep fighting for his friends and everyone in the data daybreak town to Lushu. This is what he said to Lushu that made Lushu want to preserve this kid. So everything that he says kind of has a double meaning where just like in the video before when I talked about the deeper connections between the Master of Masters and Sora and how these exact same words seem to play out in regards to his destiny. There's another character, the falsest Rex, the false king, a false king. He has a life that kind of fits this exact same mold with this internal monologue that apparently, according to Tetsuya Nomura, takes place at the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, how these two can happen at one time to where Sora can be in the final world and have this internal monologue and, you know, the same thing can be said about the bad ending to where Sora is crystallized, how these two can exist and Sora is supposedly supposed to be saying this monologue, I think it's kind of the same thing with how Sora and Yuzora both says, um, I've been having these weird thoughts lately. It's more or less, we're seeing Sora in the final world because it's the opening to the game. The opening to the game is not the event of the story. It's just an opening. So Sora is saying this stuff here in the opening. But we do know that Sora is crystallized and then Yazora and Sora both say, I've been having these weird thoughts lately, like is any of this for real or not? None of this makes sense to me. So I think that that's what's going on there, that instead of saying this, I think that Sora 
actually has thoughts about the opening, what he says in the opening, the internal monologue in his crystallized form. I think that that's what's playing out there. Then Yazora mentioned in the good ending that his powers aren't needed yet. And this leads us into the false's fate. I want to leave you with this. Tessie Nomura once said that his writing schemes are based around leaving threads that us as the players must link and connect. This is why throughout the series it's been said time and time again that there is no coincidences and destiny is never left to chance. This may be the reason behind the whole reconnect Kingdom Hearts thing that we always see at the end of the games and what has driven me to build all of this with you guys. And brain or not, Yazora is no exception. He is Noctis in all but name and context, but we are not looking at a body morph Noctis, but someone using this boy that's on the box art of Verum Rex. That's the point you missed about Yazora. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to do a little A-Class gaming and everything you do, don't forget to keep it A-Class. Let me know your thoughts on this. If you found anything about Yazora that potentially contradicts this, then let me know. But I think it's pretty much watertight at this point that Yazora, while he is per se Noctis, he's proverbially Noctis in all forms except for context and his design. He is Noctis. He is supposed to be Noctis, but that's as the character of Verum Rex. He is not Noctis when Sora meets him. The character that we're going to get to know in the future is not the character that we see as Noctis. It's someone else using his body. This is why he can know that the world isn't real, but he tells Sora that he himself is there. And then Fairy Godmother says that the heart in the final world, or the nameless star, somehow she gets there. Fairy Godmothers also confirms that she's not capable of going to the other side. It takes the power of awakening, a power that specifically Riku has, to get to her side. It requires his powers to do this. And I think this is also channeled or um, possible due to his connection to Sora. Because we know that he's apparently naturally his dream eater within his own dreams now. And the way that Fairy Godmother put two and two together and what made her important and integral to the ending of Memories of Melodies is that she sensed Riku's dreams about Quadratum and the Nameless Star's dreams about Quadratum. And she put two and two together and that's how she knew to take so Riku and Kairi to the Nameless Star. That's how she was able to bring them to the Nameless Star. But she cannot cross over into that other side. And she's a mythical entity within the series. Mythical entities are entities that are like mythical entities within the stories of the films that they come from. They're, they are still preserved as mythical entities within the series. So if that's the case, then we know that not even someone like Fairy Godmother can reach over into unreality. However, we had it confirmed in Memories of Melodies that it was a possibility that Kyrie could have been sent to a world outside of their reality. A world of unreality. If Xehanort or even Terra Xehanort, even with his botched memories, could remember how to rebuild the arcs, then just imagine the people at Scala at Kylum when Brain appears there and the potential mission that they've been waiting on him for that Sigurd mentions, that they've been specifically waiting on him to appear where he appears in Scala at Kylum. If they've been waiting on him, then this only puts us in those connections. And if the star is actually a person from our side of reality, then that would mean that, of course, they can get over to this other side. She's basically our confirmation that this is possible via the arcs. And Lushu did that to her all of that time ago. And now she's reappeared in the final world because this is the form that she was left in before Lushu sent her on into the future to reside in unreality until the day came for her to help Riku reach Sora by being a portal to Quadratum. The arcs, I believe, are being used by characters off somewhere, of course, potentially Scala at Kylum, and Brain is using Yazora's body. This even makes sense when we consider that if we are going to be going into the video of the Fosses Fate, a video about 
the Master of Masters versus Yuzora, how it could play out, and what events may come of this fight, what this fight means for destiny itself, and the fate of the world. If we are going towards this, what did Brain describe himself as? The virus that was going to stop the plans of specifically the Master of Masters. Yazora seems to be a weapon designed by someone's imagination in the form of a video game character to cut the Master of Masters off from Kingdom Hearts, preserve Sora in the crystal where only he can find him, Riku is coming too, so these, these characters are all about to meet up in one group. And when they come together, he's... Yazora even says he knew about Sora. Brain, specifically, if you pay attention when you're going through Chi or Union Cross, Brain is reading a page that seems to be about Sora at certain points in the story. The same thing is true about the Master of Masters. They're converging at this point. The virus to stop the Master of Masters, he's basically cutting in into the Master of Masters' plans, his idea of what fate is going to be, his foretelling of what fate will be he's cutting in to stop this point right here where the master of masters will get his hands on sora's keyblade of 13 darknesses his x blade of 13 darknesses that was gifted to him by master xehanort and by cutting him off from the power of kingdom hearts even if he should so get it with the help of riku and potentially sora himself later on they have a higher chance of being successful in pushing the Master of Masters out to keep him from being capable of doing whatever he wants with the Chi Blade. But we'll be talking about that in the Falsest Fate, as of course that video is about the battle and what this battle could mean should they win or lose it. It's gonna be crazy, so don't forget to tune in for that one too. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace the heck 